G'day everyone, we're gonna try something for the first time in this video. I'm really excited for this one though. Edge lit laser cut acrylic artwork. That sounds like a lot, but I think you'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. We actually got inspired by the small channel Ideal Idea, who designs an intricate artwork. And his idea is to create this multi-layered effect of acrylic panes that are then laser engraved with artworks that when the light shines through, it sort of highlights those lines. It's a really cool effect. And the, the fact that you can work with clear acrylics and create layers, I don't know, there's a lot of potential there. And we have all the parts and pieces to do something cool ourselves. This video is brought to you by my new toy, Asus's brand new ZenBook S13 OLED, the smallest, thinnest, lightest laptop of its class and a deceptively powerful beast. This has become my daily driver over the last few weeks. It's replaced my need for a lot of separate different workspaces by having something I can carry around with me. And it's military grade construction means it can handle a lot of work and movement. So if you're looking for an awesome, lightweight, super portable, hardworking laptop to take with you anywhere and on the go, you may be thinking about this one and you may want to wait till the end of the video where I share my full tech review and experience using this over the last few weeks. Huge thank you to Asus for sponsoring this video and giving me this awesome laptop. This is going to be a project that leaps between the physical and digital. So obviously I have to do the digital artwork, take it over to the laser cutter and cut very physical pieces of acrylic and see how ambitious we can get. I've never used Lightburn as an art program, so let's see how it goes. First order of business is filling this quarter of one of our sheets with a whole bunch of experimental lines and material. Before I do art, I need to figure out the depth of the cut, otherwise I'm just gonna cut straight through it or not cut deep enough. So first order of business, how deep should we cut? So in the doubliest of doubles, I basically filled my little square with a few different tests and as you can see, I'm assigning them a bunch of different colors. And that's because when I go over through to the laser cutter, each of these colors represents a different setting in the laser cutter, a different variability of speed and power of the laser. Essentially meaning I'm affecting the depth of all of these cuts. I need to create laser cuts through the acrylic that doesn't go all the way through so that the pieces fall out, but through far enough that the light that I'm gonna shine through the sides of our acrylic actually hit it and create a cool effect. Next, I wanted to see what it looked like with the line and fill. So you can set it to sort of laser etch the, a full surface interior area, which in theory might create a really cool sort of matte or full effect, maybe even light up more vibrantly, who knows? But we can just basically add this fill effect to the test sample that we have by doubling up the layers and making sure that we cut one layer with the line effect and then another layer with the fill effect, combining them to create hopefully a polished result. Alrighty, we got some test <coughs> cuts and some LED lights. All right, let's try them one at a time. <laughs> Boop. Option one, option two, option three. All right, one at a time. This is our pretty cheap battery powered LED strip. I think it's hard to tell the effect with all these lights on. Let there be darkness. Now we're talking, hey, that's actually, Really cool. Some of these effects could be pretty cool in the right context. Give me a steady color, steady color. No, that's not, God damn it. Okay, all right, that's, that's actually really cool. What have I learned about my different cuts? I honestly don't see a huge difference between any of these in terms of how, how deep the cut had to go for the light effect to work well. How about with this one, the etching? I think the clearest one is whatever, whatever this second one is. Okay. Otherwise, it's just sort of a matter of like which which light system I prefer. This is option two. Ooh. This is this is a, like a way stronger effect than I expected. Show me your colors. Ah, am I supposed to aim at this? On, off. Do something! All right, option three. The remote control works. So that's a bonus and it feels way more robust. It's this versus option one. Let's go back to the original one. Cheap battery. Fancy remote, yeah, it's way brighter. That's way brighter. Which I think tells us we have our winner. With my double done, I have taken quite a few learnings that I can now apply to a more comprehensive double. I'm not ready to commit to a full epic final art piece until I've tested something with real art. So next I wanna test something bigger and 
something multi-layered. And because while Lightburn is not a great artwork program, it is a really great vector tracer. Meaning I can take any bitmap or raster image, throw it in here and with the tracer settings, find the sweet spot of sort of cookie cutout style tracings of images. And using this, I wanted to create a two layer image that I could cut on two separate pieces of acrylic to then test both how artwork shows with the lighting effect, but then also how it shows with a double layer image where in theory, I should be able to attach two different lighting strips to the two two different pieces of acrylics and set them to different colors. Now, as you can tell, to try and just keep something really straightforward, I went with something with a lowish horizon line and a background feel, and then the other piece is obviously the foreground figure. But honestly, even though this is still kind of experiment territory, I just want to make something as cool as I possibly can to see how far I can take this medium. It's the moment of the truth. No, no! I didn't cut deep enough for it to come out. Be nice, be nice. All right, yes! Oh, thank God. I feel like I set my gouge too deep on this one. <laughs> it's very frosty. How did this one go? Let's uh, clean up our Superman. We still get these sort of cloudy edges. Not 100% sure how to solve that. My next question is, does this show as visible in front of this? Well, unlit, I mean, not a lot, but lit. Let's go find out. Wait, no, no. Uh, Let's get lit. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right, now we're getting constructy. I've got two layers, but I also have different intensity with these lights that I've finalized with. I'm going to use the bright one for my hero and the battery dimmer one for the background. These are also, I believe, cuttable. Let's test that theory. Let's hope that it is. All right, let's test the first one. Okay, off to a good start. Now for our main man. Now we have a lot more with this and it is a lot brighter. Let's do it. Let's find out if the purpose of all of this is cool. You ready? Oh, we're gonna hit the lights. Hit! Start off with the background. Ooh. Now for our hero. Oh, I think we're onto something very cool. So what's next? We make a custom artwork that spreads over more layers, that's bigger, that's better lit. And we are gonna end up with one epic futuristic piece of art. Now the Superman worked so well, I just had to do something heroic. And with Spider-Man Through the Spider-Verse coming out soon, I am very excited to see that and I love that style and I just feel that neon edge of the Spider-Verse series is perfect for this medium. So I set about with some references, scribbling out some thumbnail sketches of some layered artworks, including Miles Morales that I thought would look cool. Settling on one of him hanging upside down, holding a spray can, having just sprayed his mark on a New York wall. Then on to making a bigger rough sketch, getting a little further into the details and composition. When I was happy with the proportions and composition, I went through with my digital pencil, refining more of the details and proportions and then on to inks. This would be the layer that would be laser cut. And this is where I needed to be a little more thoughtful, breaking it up into a few different layers. So with my core line work done, I colored that red so it was really obvious to see separately from future layers and then worked on a couple of separate layers. One with some subtler details that would also be laser cut but much more shallowly or quickly so that hopefully they would just sort of sink away a little bit. And another layer where I just sort of color in where the laser is gonna fill, which will create a white look, filling in the edge of the sneakers and the whites of the eyes. The rest of the piece was really easy to put together. I used a combination of Google image searches, pulled out the color and cranked the levels so that the mids were almost like a pixel away from the highs and dragged the highs down. This created an immediate black and white cutout look that I could then move wherever I want to get the intensity of the lines that I wanted to create. Starting for the brick wall and the foreground and that Spider-Man logo, then through to the background elements, one layer at a time, creating a view of a New York alley in depth that would really pop with our laser cut.
Last but not least, I have to prepare my cut in Lightburn, breaking apart those four layers into individual panels that would be cut and engraved one layer at a time. I made sure to have enough bleed over with each layer to the one behind so that we could get a cool parallax effect without the art disappearing. It was a delicate balance, but I really took my time to try and get this right. And the laser really took its time to cut and engrave it. About five or six hours by my estimation. With the laser cut complete, it was just a matter of pulling out the four pieces, giving them a really solid clean, and on to creating a housing with some neat lighting all around the edges, with a little bit of spacing between each layer, so that we can show you the epic reveals. So here he is, my Miles Morales acrylic laser cut superhero piece. I, I love the result. I really love that street feel of the neon aesthetic with the laser cut acrylic. It was really fun to experiment with and honestly way more impactful and straightforward to produce than I ever imagined. Just goes to show sometimes giving something a solid go can produce really fun results. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'll see you later. Oh my, what an epic artwork, I'm hoping you said to yourself. And if you did, I hope you might have noticed that the whole thing was made using the ZenBook S13 OLED. So this is gonna be a little bit of a brief tech review, but if you want the full tech review, go check out the vlog that I made, which goes in depth with all the details of the S13 OLED, the world's slimmest OLED ultra portable laptop using a 13th gen i7 core processor and an Iris Xe graphics card, up to 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, one terabyte hard drive, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. That IR camera so it scans your eyes to log in if you wanted to, a large ErgoSense touchpad, 2.8K OLED display, which is absolutely gorgeous. Decent amount of IO ports with two full Thunderbolts, a full size HDMI, an audio jack and a type A 3.2 port. But a laptop like this is made to move. It's made to go with you and work with you in as many circumstances and situations as possible, which is what I tried to put it through in the last couple of weeks. If it's as easy to pick this up and take it to a meeting as an iPad Pro is, then you're winning. It's beautifully designed. I genuinely love that laptop cover, which side note is actually designed and made out of recycled material. You wouldn't get this to be a gaming laptop. However, with Diablo 4 launching this week, I couldn't resist trying. And to my delight, it actually worked. Anyway, huge thank you to ASUS for taking me to the launch event, providing me with a ZenBook S13 OLED and being an awesome supporter of all things Jazza. Thank you for watching this fairly extensive review, but I thought it was a bit helpful and blunt and fun. Jazz it out. Links in the in the description.